for Oregon Sports Network for Duck Games, Joey. <laughs> Finally, we got somebody up here that's close to my age. <laughs> Is this thing working? Am I on? <laughs> can you hear it, Joey? Yeah! I know you're out there. I can hear you breathing. Don't forget to try the veal. <laughs> you know, you were, you were fortunate to do a, a couple of duck games this year. Uh, how did you like being the broadcaster up there? You know, I actually kind of liked it. Um, it gave me a chance to... I mean, I, I think all of us on the panel see football in a different way. You know, after playing for so long, you, you watch it differently than, you know, the average fan at home. And, and you're looking for certain things, certain things that trigger plays, how this worked, why this worked. And being a color analyst allowed me to share that with people. Say, hey, look, great play by, you know, great play by LaMichael here. Here's what opened it up. Open it up. This block sealed the end. This guy got the corner. Bam, we're off to the races. And, and it was it's fun to be able to explain the the little pieces of football to people. Hey, you're not after my job, are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds pretty good. I gotta write that down. You're the youth. <laughs> Explain to people what happened. <laughs> college football. I don't want anything to do with the NFL. I'll take college, you take the NFL. <laughs> I tell you what, I would love to be in your shoes being able to broadcast the Duck Games because, although it's tough because it's fast tempo, up tempo, fast pace, you ran out of breath, couldn't you? Well, that was the toughest thing. Is that I only had about nine seconds to get my point across before we went on to the next play, and so you, you kind of had to. Do I say something? Do I say something? It's like being on the field in court, you know, being a quarterback. If you hesitate, you're done, and then you're running into the next play. So uh, you just got to do it. Just spit it out. Well, okay. Let's spit out some uh, keys to the game then. Offensively for the Ducks. Keys to the game. You know what? For me, the offensive key to the game is very simple. Get the ball uh, out of Darren's hands quickly, early. Get him to you know, complete the plans, complete the bubbles. Um, they don't have to be big, you know, not big plays down the field, but show Auburn that you can throw the ball. Throw, uh, show Auburn that we're not going to rely on the Michael and Kenya on this, uh, you know, the whole game. Because if if we allow Auburn to tee off on a run game. Um, there's a big boy in the middle who could, who could, um, you know, wreak a little havoc. So if we can force Auburn to play us, just play us consistently, you know, just play us fair defensively, I, I think we're going to have a fantastic chance. But it, it's going to rely on Darren Thomas getting the ball out of his hands quickly, completing some passes, and getting a balanced offense going and not relying on the run the whole time. So now we, uh, so we switch to the defense now. You're going up against Cam Newton. Heisman Trophy winner, uh, phenomenal. He's 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 bigger than Max Unger down there. Kurt Neer. Faster than Dennis Baby. Baby. <laughs> How do we stop him? You don't. You don't. I mean, that's that's the reality. Alabama, nope, didn't stop him. LSU, nope, didn't stop him. South Carolina, twice, nope, didn't stop him. Mississippi State, I mean, we can go through a list of top 25 teams, great defenses that did not stop Cam Newton. So, how I think we match up with, with, with this team is with our offense. Those teams didn't have the offenses that we do. They didn't have the ability to score points with Auburn. So, one or two turnovers. I think that's all it's going to take. Yeah. Whoever has a chance with more offensive possessions is going to have a huge advantage in this football game. So, like, like Dennis just said, you don't have to stop them. Just contain them. You know, force them to make a mistake. Force a turnover. That way you can turn that turnover into points, and now all of a sudden we've got an advantage. Just maintain him. He's gonna he's gonna score. I mean that's especially especially with Nick Aliotti type defenses. I mean he's gonna be he's gonna be bringing the house. I mean there'll be people coming from all directions, and they're gonna make some big plays, but they're gonna give up some as well. Create a couple turnovers, get the ball back into our offense's hands because that may be our best uh, that may be our best defense is uh, is scoring some points against these guys. Hello. Yeah. Jonathan, Jonathan, pay attention. I got a special question for you. Since you're a great kickoff returner, we've got a pretty darn good punt kickoff returner on this ball club and Cliff Harris. Special teams could be the key. And then Dennis Dixon and Jonathan Stewart.
Jarvis Burt's here. Max, huh? up, Max Unger's here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to the house. Yeah. And, um, I mean, special teams, I mean, they, they, they win okay. big games. So, I mean, uh, I know when I was back in, col when yeah. I was in college, you know, kickoff return, I mean, that sets the tone of each, you know, the first half, you know, the second half, you come out, and you do something special on special teams, that gets everybody pumped up. And, I mean, I believe in Cliff Harris. That man, hey, he, okay. I don't understand how he just comes up okay. and just, Catch his punts like that and just like just daring. It's a daredevil tactic. I don't know. <laughs> he's gonna he's hey he's gonna okay. take one to the house. You heard it here first. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're passing down to Jerry okay. now. I mean, is this one working? We yeah. are. You just want one, Jerry? You want five? Do it one. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Jonathan yeah. talked about the daredevil part yeah. of returning kicks. Yeah. Returning punts. Is tougher than kickoffs, isn't it? Oh, no question. Why? Just because okay. you have a split second and everyone's running down okay. there. It could be a high kick and everyone's right down in your face. And they're okay. running full speed okay. trying to take your head okay. off. So. Okay. <laughs> Oregon's always uh, seemed to have coached Osborne to be able to break kickoffs or punt returns. And, and the middle return on the punt return is uh, really a trademark of Osborne and the Ducks. What's the key to that? Really just catching it and going upfield. Um, you know, an another person in that is uh, Coach Radcliffe, our strength conditioning coach. He works with the returners, so we can't leave him out. And he does a great job of just teaching you to just, you know, catch the ball, get up the field, and um, those middle returns, you know, they, they, they work with that. So, yeah. All right, let's, let's talk to Max just one more time about Now, as a center, <laughs> you got to put your head between your legs sometimes and look back at, you know, Dennis or or Joey, and he got a 300-pounder right on your head. Why are you smiling? <laughs> very, very fond memories. Yeah, uh, yeah that's a, it's, it's tough, tough business. Uh, I remember uh, Asper uh, said something this year, uh, you know, it, he, he called it the, not the spread offense, but the no breathing offense. So, uh, you know, you're even pretty good, but um, that's, it's part of the game plan, uh, you know, going quick and, uh, you know, wearing, wearing teams down. Uh, so the uh, the big guy that crossing you softens up a little bit in the fourth quarter, and uh, that uh, plays a pretty big uh, pretty big part in the game plan. All right, you're down in the pits. Give me your key as an offensive lineman to the Ducks win. Uh, you know, uh, running the ball. Um, you know, the, uh, this, the the zone blocking scheme that we have is is, is pretty crucial. If uh, Darren pulls the ball when the read's right. Uh, you know, you can't, um, uh, you really can't decide what you're going to do uh, when you're running, uh, you know, the spread, the zone read, uh, the run plays uh, before it happens. You have to really react to uh, the defensive end that you're reading or the person you're reading, and that, uh, that'll, pro that'll be really, really big. They said you were the shy one up here. <laughs> really? That was good. You always count on offensive linemen. I, I, in fact, I wish you were closer to me. I would feel more comfortable. <laughs> Safety. That's okay. <laughs> Jarris? That's why I can barely walk. I had guys like that walking. <laughs> All the guys I played with are dead anyway. <laughs> Jarris, I want to get a defensive perspective from you about this game. What do we have to do on defense now? We got to control Cam Newton. I know that's obvious, but we got to control him. Everything goes through him, and that's what we got to do. Like you said, we got to make some turnovers, which I know we're going to do. And then we got to, you know, fans, we got to get it rocking in there. Yeah. Yeah. On fire, so. Jonathan, your turn. We've had, we've had Joe. Give him the rock, baby! Yo! Yo! Joey says we gotta get the ball out quickly from Darren. Max says we gotta run that zone blocking. 
Your keys? LaMichael James. Yeah. Um, we got we to gotta cut him loose. And um, I think, you know, we got to feed him the ball. You know, I mean, I know we're going to feed him the ball over 20 times. And, um, but I think that the beginning of the fourth quarter, uh, Auburn's defense is going to be so tired of uh, yeah. uh, yeah. chasing him. And trying to figure out why is this, why is this little man just controlling the game like this? So uh, I think Lamarco James, I think Lamarco James is going to be the key factor to this game, of getting things rolling. So, um, and Oregon, get, uh, Oregon fans, once again, like y'all got to, hey, this is going to be my first Oregon game that I've ever seen in person. Wow. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to need y'all to rock it. I'm going to need y'all to pass the, the memo. Man, Jonathan Stewart's first game is the national championship game, and we're going to be For real though, um, we gotta have trust as far as the run game and pass game. We gotta be able to, you know, be even killed with both of those. Um, the pass game will really exploit the running game, and we all know our running game is uh, very high power. Uh, so um, we got to rely on people like Jeff Mayo, and he's gonna have a big game as well. And Joey, we're Family background, grandfather and father, Ducks. What would a win against Auburn mean? You only had one in six chances. No, and go ahead. I think the win against Auburn would would validate all that we've done as a university and a, pro, and a football program. I mean, people, people have asked me, you know, what, is it, what does it mean for you as an Oregon, as a former Oregon player, to see the team where, where they are right now? And, and the first thing I think about is, honestly, guys like you, guys like my dad, um, who played. <laughs> Guys who who were playing for Oregon when we had some talent, but we weren't great. I mean, let, let, let's let's be honest. I mean, there were there were years through the '60s and '70s where we had some good teams, but but we never could get by the USC's and the Washingtons. Years in the '80s where we were horrible, horrible. They were talking about kicking us, us and Oregon State, out of the Pac-10 and going back to the Pac-8. And then you get to a guy like Bill Musgrave, who takes us to our first bowl game in 30 years. And that game in Shreveport, that game in Shreveport leads us to another game of the Freedom Bowl. And that Freedom Bowl leads us to a surprise Rose Bowl. It allows us to recruit guys, guys like Kristen McLemore, like Josh Wilcox, like Danny O'Neill, a 5'10 quarterback who takes a team, who, who throws for almost 500 yards in a Rose Bowl. Those wins take us to the Sun Bowl. Guys like Peter Sermon. Guys like Ruben Drones, who take us to the Holiday Bowl, to, to the Fiesta Bowl, when, when we last had the chance to, you know, first had the chance to be here. And, it, and, it's, a, and, it's, a, and it's a building pro process through these guys' teams, you know, 04, 06, 07, when they had a chance to get back to the National Championship. <laughs> I mean, it really has. You can watch this program evolve. And we are now to the point where people know who we are. The billboard went up in 2001. The uniforms came out in 2003. Everybody, you know, who are these guys? They're pushing the envelope. I, you know, 